Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, I just, just made it. Uh, the typhoon is just part of my job, so it wasn't so bad. Uh, I don't take myself very serious, uh, but what we do is sometimes a little bit serious. So um, I want to really thank Ted for, for this amazing, I didn't know they even existed. I don't know of a lot of things, but it's an amazing platform to get your story out there. And really, guys, keep on with this great job. Um, it is, uh, I think, a benchmark uh, that we can see around the world and to be able to um, be a, a guest uh, really is a great honor. So I've been told that I've only got 20 minutes. Um, how can you squeeze in 20 years of exploration uh, in 20 minutes? It's kind of easy, just speak uh, about one expedition and I thought that it wasn't interesting to speak about what I've done because it's quite, it's, it's, I don't do this stuff. It's embarrassing standing on a stage speaking to people about yourself. Um, but what I want to speak about today is, is about what have I learned through exploration. And I can tell you honestly and sincerely, it's easier uh, to go to the North Pole at night during the winter in, in fact, there's more people that has been on the moon than has made it to the North Pole at night than to come here and speak to you. So if I make mistakes, uh, please excuse me, um, but uh, I'll, I'll quickly take you uh, through part of my life. Um, I studied sport injuries and sport psychology at a, at a university in South Africa called Stellenbosch. It wasn't about studying, it was about drinking wine and meeting people. So I didn't waste my time there. I basically um, had the best time of my life. And when I finished my studies, I started working and quickly earned quite a lot of money. Um, woke up a week later and decided that, listen, this is not what makes me happy. So I had the biggest party that you can ever imagine. Invited all the students from the university, everybody that was from my military days, and everything I had, I gave away. I kept a bag with two t-shirts and sh uh, two shorts and went to the airport. At that stage, um, South Africans were boycotted. We couldn't go anywhere in the world, but we could go to Israel, Switzerland, and England. Nobody wants to go to England and Israel. <laughs> so as a South African at that stage, I said, listen, guys, um, Switzerland. So I arrived there. I was on standby, and there was one seat left. I arrived in Switzerland. And that is where my life as an explorer really started. From having everything that I felt that I didn't have the freedom to having nothing and just all of a, uh, all of a sudden discovering that that is what freedom is all about, is by not having things but having nothing. I want to ask you this question, and this question is quite important because we're all individuals. And the question is simple. What makes you, you? I think we all have the answers. Maybe not at your age, but as I am growing a little bit older, uh, I often ask myself, what makes me, me? I think what I'm going to try and explain to you through this couple of slides is why I do what I do. Because why do fish swim? Why do birds fly? Why do I what I do, and why do you do what you do? I think that it's quite simple. It's because we can. And we only do what we can. So when I wake up in the morning and I'm going to the North Pole or South Pole, or I'm climbing a mountain or crossing the oceans or fighting a typhoon, um, that's what I love doing. I do what I do to live and not to die. That has to be understood. If you start as an explorer um, and you have to cycle down mountains, go over the highest waterfalls that's ever been done, swim through the deepest canyon in the world, and then all of a sudden find yourself in front of the Amazon River where you have 7,000 kilometers to swim completely alone, you have to live off nature, you've got to know why you're there. <laughs> because... It's, sorry for this word, it's an effing long river. <laughs> so, 
when you stand in front of this little river, um, and you're only about this high, and you have to walk up to the source of the river, and to get to the source is already about 600 kilometers. It's not a little walk. Uh, and you meet these, these pre-Inca mummies. And by the way, this is, I think, one of the only photos that you'll ever see of an intact pre-Inca mummy. 2,500 years ago, they walked where I thought I was the first man to walk. So this little lady was my only girlfriend I had during the expedition. <laughs> and she was already 2,500 years older than I was. Um, but she walked there before I did. And once you jump into this river, you get to the Rubicon. We all know what the Rubicon is, the point of no return. That moment when you leave that you can never come back. If you're afraid of losing, and that's what we all are afraid of every day of our life. We're afraid of losing who we are, our friends, our car, our house, our family. If you're afraid of losing, you can never win. It is only when the will to win overpowers that fear that we constantly have inside ourselves to lose that we can go, uh, can go out there and jump in the river. I'm not afraid of losing. I'm not afraid of losing. But I'm going there to win. If I know I'm going to die along the way, I'm not going to do it. That's called stupidity. <laughs> Once I swam into the mouth of the Amazon River, um, into, into, um, into the Amazon, and I started hunting uh, little crocodiles, you have to understand if there's a little crocodile in front, in front of you. This is not Steve Irwin stuff. This is real survival. I'm quite hungry, and I don't have a camera team following me, and I've got a you know, fine place to sleep. And you see the crocodile. You have to know that that crocodile is not more hungry than you are hungry. <laughs> it's only the guy that's got the biggest hunger pains that is going to survive. And basically, I learned that in uncomfortable situations, I can be really comfortable. Imagine swimming out into the, into the mouth of the Amazon. The mouth of the Amazon is only 321 kilometers wide. 321 kilometers wide. The only way that I knew I was in the, in the ocean and not in the river was by tasting the water. The moment the water turned salt, I knew I was in the Atlantic Ocean. And that was the end of the expedition. But now, start swimming 150 kilometers to the side of the river. You do it in two weeks. <laughs> two weeks in the water. I don't know if you understand what two weeks really mean. In the water. <laughs> Stupidity. <laughs> so, like I said, I don't take myself serious. But what did I learn from that? What did I come back from? That it is not important to reach the end. It is important to live every day of your life. We have today 30,000 days in a lifetime. That's our average life. 30,000 days. You guys, maybe another 28,000 days to live. I've got another 12,000 days to live if everything goes well and uh, I don't keep on doing stupid things. I'll have another 11 or 12,000 days to live. 11,000 days to live is not a lot. People today, they complain constantly on how difficult life is. How about bettering yourself a little bit, getting yourself a little bit better prepared to make life a little bit easier instead of sitting in front of the TV and complaining how difficult life is? <laughs> life has so many opportunities, guys. Life has so many opportunities. And if you are passionate about what you do, you want to wake up in the morning. You want to live a 24-hour life. You don't want to ever go to sleep. And when I wanted to be the first man in the world to sail right around the world following the equator, I wanted to do this. Not to be the first man, but to learn from nature that can be the only teacher to humans because you know nature is always stronger than you. 
you know that when you go in this fight, you're going to lose. When the will to win is stronger than that fear we have to lose, that's when you can go out there and achieve. Imagine walking away from this, this part and just carry on walking, and I'm not going to do it because I've only got about 10 minutes left to speak, and two years later, coming through that door all the way up, just walked around the world. <laughs> just walked around the world and sailed around the world. That's what we do every day. So for us as human beings, we usually, what we do, we go somewhere, and then we hit this wall, and we give up. Today, the youth gets distance from nature. They get taught to give up. They get taught to move away, not to get involved. And what I have discovered is that once you get involved, you want to fight it out to the end. Because giving up has never ever to me been a solution in any of the expeditions that I've done. I knew one thing, and often I call stupid people monkeys. I think you do as well. And a monkey might be stupid, but monkeys kept me alive in the jungle. There's places in the Amazon jungle on the equator that the sun has never reached the ground. The only way that I could survive was listening to the monkeys when they would go, it's calm. If they would do a high-pitched sound, I would know there would be something coming in to hunt them that can eat me. So I would climb up the tree, <laughs> get away, be part of the monkeys. When I was hungry, everything that a monkey eat, I can eat. If the monkey sits up in that tree and he eats the leaves, climb up that tree and eat the same leaves, you won't die. But the moment that the monkey sits up in the tree and he doesn't eat anything, that's where the human can climb up the tree and eat the monkey, and we'll survive. <laughs> so over the mountains, back two years later to the exact same point where I left from. I had five little pebbles in my, in my back pocket. The moment I, I, I walked away from where I picked them up, I thought that I'll never, ever, ever get back to where I'm walking away from because it's only halfway around the world, then you realize that now you're going back home. So when I had enough of snakes biting me and I had mosquitoes uh, and jungle and whatever, cocaine dealers, I was put in front of a death squad, a guy was shot next to me, but I've only got five minutes left to tell you about the rest of my life. Um, so. <laughs> I've got, to, I've got to hurry up. That you can find out a little bit later. Um, I decided to go up to the Arctic Circle. The Arctic Circle has never been successfully circumnavigated. It's about 20,000 kilometers, and the idea was to go from Norway, sail to Greenland, and then start with a little stroll across Greenland, Canada, Alaska, and about 12,000 kilometers all around uh, Russia back home. So that's how I left. Uh, just a little sled with about 200 kgs, uh, 400 pounds of equipment, food and fuel, um, and then a couple of skis. Anybody of you that feels like doing it can do it tomorrow, but um, you have to be well prepared. This is actually what happens in, in when it gets quite cold. Uh, quite cold is minus 60. Uh, when it gets to minus 60 uh, and you make small mistakes, uh, this is how you end up. Um, but I started with 20 toes. So I had 10 to lose, and you can see today, they're not my feet, luckily. Um, if you're alone in the Arctic for two and a half years, you cannot afford to make mistakes, because that's your last mistake. And when your cornea starts freezing, and the crystals start cutting the circulation to your eyes, that's when you know why you're there. I don't know, maybe you get that feeling when you get in your car and you drive to work, why am I doing it? <laughs> I can tell you, 
it's easier to go to the North Pole. You can explain to yourself why you're doing it and laugh at yourself. But when you walk on the ice for over two years and three months, and every day you see something new, every day you discover something that's inside yourself, that's what life is all about. That passion that pushes us beyond our known limits. That passion that makes us wake up every morning. That's why I do what I do. And that passion I wanted to share with the younger generation. As time went by, I decided that maybe the biggest challenge in the world would be to go to the North Pole in the winter. This expedition has been done once. And this expedition has never been repeated. There's more people that's been on the moon than has been to the North Pole in the winter. And there's a little bit of sound to this, but this would give you an idea what it's all about. When the ice breaks up, we have to put a survival suit on. The ice is drifting away from Russia towards Canada. You've got to get out of minus 40, jump into the water and swim across. Is it dangerous or not? <laughs> yes, for those who do not know what they're doing. But for us, completely normal. What happens in darkness is quite amazing because humans get to a stage that they, they want to see a little bit of light. And once you want to see this light, you kind of all of a sudden realize that um, you can't live without life. And that's what keeps you alive. You want to see the sun rise, the first person in the world standing on the North Pole, see the sun rise above the equator. That is true value. That is a value that's so deeply embedded in you that nobody can take it away from you. No money can buy it. You cannot lose this value. And that's what we have to invest on in our lives. The true value that makes you who you are. Who makes you the father to your kids? You have to give your kids something that is so unique that your kids can only find it with you and they'll say, that's my father. It's not buying them an iPod or buying them a computer or bicycle. It's giving them that uniqueness that they say, that is why he is my father. Polar bear with two cubs. If you see a polar bear approaching and you see the polar bear rolling its backside like this, you've got a big ass out there. The polar bear would keep a head low. You know that polar bear is healthy. That polar bear is not going to harm you. But for the last 10 years, polar bears weren't rolling their asses. They walk like women that eat bio the whole day and walk, walk out of these salad bars uh, <laughs> like this because their bums are so small and their legs are so thin that they can't even walk with wider legs. So polar bears start walking like that. If I look at the track, I can see if the polar bear is hungry or not. Today, this image where... A polar bear has gone with her cubs to the North Pole to feed. She has just reached the last extremity of the world. Further than that, she cannot go. The ice that was once four meters thick is today 15 centimeters thick on the pole. Guys, seriously, I've been out there. This is not science and bullshit. There's one man that has seen it. For 20 years, I've been out there looking at it. I'm not an Al Gore telling you things that, with a big stomach and, and telling you that the world's heating up. I've been there. I lived it. I've seen it. It's up to us to start acting. This mother stayed there for about 20 minutes wanting to eat me, and I'm trying to get away, but as soon as I get away, she moves in. And this, two days before I reached the North Pole, 
very thin ice. That's why she's there. That's when the seal breaks through this ice, sits on the ice, and she can hunt them. Before, it has never been like this. I'll end up with this, one of the greatest moments of my life, reaching the North Pole. And I think through this you'll understand why I do what I do. Thanks for a great trip. Hey, thanks a lot, my friend. We did this together. Oh, for sure, man. No, we, uh, we did an amazing uh, experience. We did it as a team. And it was important. Uh, although I can barely see your eyes, I think... Uh, I can barely see yours. 28 minus is the 23rd of March 2006 and we have just accomplished the first ever winter expedition to the North Pole. End of story. So, um, for me, I'm, I'm grateful to have shared it with a guy as great as Austin. And thank you very much for all the help and courage. When you stand on the pole, no, don't, that's just my job. It's not even... When you stand on the pole and you put your flag on the pole and, the, and, and, and your flag boom moves back because the ice is moving. For 30 days we walked, 30 days, one month with two kilometer progress. As we were walk, walking forward, the ice was moving back. When you put your flag on the pole eventually and the flag drifts back and you lift up your, your, your flag and you put it back on the pole and it drifts back again and you pick up that bloody flag and you put it on that pole and it's mine, it's mine, I've deserved it, I've worked all my life to get there. I'm the first person in the world to do it. You all of a sudden realize that, oh, it doesn't matter. It is in the start, you think you have the knowledge to do it, but when you eventually reach your goal, you understand that I didn't know enough to try it again. I think that's what we have to know about life, is that life is exciting. Life has 30,000 days. Guys, live it every day of your life. Live it to the fullest. Each day might be your last day. So, this is what we share. If you guys are interested, just look at mycorn.com. We invite young adults between the age of 15 to 20 years old to go to these extremities. I build a boat in the slums of Sao Paulo, the biggest exploration vessel, to take these guys safely around the world. For more info, just look at it. Thank you very much.